What are some of the ways in which you applied those skills to the text of the Gospels? A couple of things I suspected that I used to always throw up my Christian friends, and they were just speechless when you'd kind of offer these objections. And the first one was, okay, fine, you got a document. Great, you, you trust this Bible. Uh, why do you trust this Bible? Uh, you think it's written by eyewitnesses? Okay, every document in this Bible is incredibly late. You don't have an entire, complete New Testament until the fourth century. All your manuscript evidence is late. I used to say that all the time. Mm -hmm. So you can't trust its eyewitnesses because if, you, if you're an eyewitness, you were actually present to see it. But if you're waiting 100 years and writing this text, well, then there's no one alive to tell you, oh, yeah, I was there. It didn't, it didn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. It's easy to tell a lie if no one is around who knows, knows better. Would you agree? So if it's a late document, I'm out. And that was the first thing I had, the first bridge I had to cross is do I really think these are early enough to contain eyewitness accounts? And so you that, used Luke, who I quoted earlier, yeah. as sort of I loved of it, a, by the way, when you quoted Luke. That's a great passage, I think. Yeah, because it sets up the whole investigative it does. aspect of it. But you can use that. You can use Luke and Acts to create a, help create a timeline. Because as you say, the closer to the event the eyewitness accounts are, the more credible because... Yes, know, at least they passed the first test yeah. I would offer, which is, were they really there? Yes. You can't be the killer if you weren't really there. You can't be a witness if you weren't really there. Yeah. So, so that how was does the Luke and, and Acts uh, that he wrote it help set that timeline? Well, okay, so you know that Luke wrote the two books, the book of Acts and the Gospel of Luke, and he wrote Luke first. He knows he t says this in the Gospel of, uh, of, of Luke and then in the book of Acts. So we know which one came first. But in the book of Acts, I noticed that there were several things missing from the scene that should be in the book if it happened in the first century. One of them was the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD. It's not in the book of Acts. Also, the siege that took place for two or three years before they destroyed the temple in, in, in uh, Jerusalem is also missing from the book of Acts. And, this and that, were, these were cataclysmic oh, yeah. events. I mean, far worse than the, tw uh, the twin uh, uh, trade towers, far worse. Because you had a siege in which people were starved out. If they tried to, ex to leave, Rome, uh, leave at Jerusalem, rather, they were executed by the Romans on the way out. They were crucified on the roads. Any Jew who tried to leave Jerusalem. Not only that, they were starved, no food supplies. Josephus, the Jewish historian, says when the Romans finally got inside the walls of Jerusalem, they found that the people were eating each other to stay alive. That's how bad it was, and there's no mention of it anywhere in Luke's gospel, much of which is centered in Jerusalem. Or the book of Acts. I'm sorry, in the book of Acts, yeah. And so that bothered me. I thought, that's interesting. That's missing, right? Why would that be missing? Also, the death of Paul, the death of Peter, and the death of James, the brother of Jesus, the three most important people in the book of Acts, Luke never mentions it. But he mentions the death of Stephen, and he mentions the death of James, the brother of John. That happened in 44. But he leaves out the deaths that happened in 61, 64, and 67. And the siege in 68 and the temple destruction in 70. And Paul is still alive at the end He's of Acts. He's still alive at the end of the book of Acts. So why are none of these things in the 60s and 70s mentioned by Luke? Well, it seemed to me that it, maybe it hadn't happened yet. If it hasn't happened yet, you can't mention it. <laughs> So if we're going to date the book of Acts, say in the late 50s, early 60s, that would explain why it's missing all that data. Could we test that? So I started looking at the evidence, you know, in the scripture. You see that Paul quotes from the gospel of Luke in his letter to Timothy. Well, that's written in the 60s. But he's quoting the gospel of Luke as though it's scripture already. Then he quotes the gospel of Luke 10 years earlier to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians, where he's talking about, hey, I want you guys to celebrate the Lord's Supper the way I taught you, and he recites the way he taught them. When did he teach them that? Probably around 51, 52, when he was first in Corinth. And he recites a big chunk of the Gospel of Luke. So it's clear that Luke's Gospel is around pretty early for Paul to quote it, and that would explain why the book of Acts is missing all that data. He wrote Luke before Acts, and he's quoting Luke in the 50s. Do you see the problem? We're too close to the action. Now we're only 20 years after the crucifixion. And there's a, a line that you quoted right in the first chapter of Luke where Luke says, and by the way, cops are really bad about nitpicking words, right? So if I do an interview, I want that thing transcribed immediately because I'm going to go back through the transcription and look at all the different places that where you said something that I think is provocative. 
And one of the things I'm always looking at are the words that you had a choice about. You didn't have to use them, but you decided to use them anyway. So it's like adjectives and adverbs. Those are big to me. These are my glasses. These are my really cool brown plastic glasses. See the difference? I didn't have to say really cool brown plastic. I chose to say that. It tells you something about me, or at least what I think about these stupid glasses, right? So the optional words are important, and you saw in that verse that Lee put on the, on the screen that there was an optional word. He says, I'm writing for you, Theophilus, an orderly account. And the word orderly is a Greek word that means in the correct chronological order. In other words, I've got the sequence of events in the right order. Why did he say that? I mean, think about that. He didn't have to say that. He could just say, I'm writing for you an account of the life of Jesus. I would assume it's in the right order. But no, he made a point of saying it's in the right order. Well, it turns out there's another first century gospel out there that's not in the right order. Papias says that when Mark was scribing for Peter in Rome, writing his gospel, the gospel of Mark, Papias says that Mark was accurate, if not orderly. Because Peter's teaching in themes. And Mark's putting them back together in this gospel. But now Luke, doing the investigation, has got, and who do you think he quotes more than any other source, word for word? There's more words from the gospel of Mark in Luke's gospel than any other source. So now we've got Luke's account, which takes Mark's account, and it puts it in the right order. But that means that Mark's account has to be written prior to Luke's account, and that just inches me closer to the crucifixion. I just got to the point where I was like, you know what? That issue about is it early enough, it was resolved for me. Mm. I, these are our, our early accounts, and, and we even have better, like you always talk about. Yeah, there's even earlier accounts outside the Gospels. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we have a creed or a report of the earliest church that says Jesus died for our sins, he was buried, uh, he, he rose on the third day, and he appeared, and he mentioned specific eyewitnesses to whom he appeared, including groups of eyewitnesses and individuals, and, and, and even says, there's 500 of them, if you don't believe me, basically, go ask them, they're still around. And, and, but this particular passage can be dated back to within months of the death of yeah. Jesus. So we've got, we've got a news flash from ancient history, it goes right back to the beginning. So this is fresh information in terms of being, having proximity to the events that took place. And think about how powerful that is, what he just said. About, there's 500 people you could still ask. Now, either that's a really gutsy play on <laughs> Paul's part, right? Because there really aren't 500 people, so I'm just going to toss this out. I don't think that anyone will ever fact check me. That's one way to look at it. Or some skeptics have tried to offer that that was not part of the original letter of Paul. That's a late insertion. But as they examine it, it's not a late insertion. They can't find any early manuscript. There's no other manuscript have. evidence for that. We're stuck with this guy either really being bold and writing a letter in the early 50s in which he says, if you don't believe me, talk to those people who all saw, by the way, those 500 saw Jesus rise on the same day. They're all from the same day. So that's pretty gutsy, I thought. That yeah. was pretty bold.